People think this is all about charts, it's all about financial news. What you've got to realize, a lot of this is to do with psychology. Because at the end of the day, it's people that make up markets. And people are naturally greedy or they're scared. And markets go through two, basically, um, things. They go through greed, where basically people, you know, you've got the big bull markets. And if you look back at the NASDAQ or if you look at the Chinese stock markets at the moment, are going through quite a bit of a bubble. And you'll go through fear when nobody wants to touch the stock market, nobody wants to trade the market. And again, when I say stock market, this could be the commodities, currencies, art market, classic cars, uh, tulip bulbs, if you go back in history, the South Sea bubble. You know, it's interesting how things just keep repeating themselves time and time again. Buy the rumour, sell the fact. You know, it's many cases people don't realise that the news that they see or read in the paper it's already been discounted. Markets are always looking forward. They're always looking for, you know, what next? This is an interesting um, graph or chart. It's basically the NASDAQ composite. And in a way, it's a bit like a pyramid. So what you've got here, you've got the upside, which is basically is the greed. Everybody wants to get into the NASDAQ. Now, if you're new and you don't know what the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ is a market listed in the States. It was one that, um, has most shares are based in things like technology, biotech. It's more of the go-go shares. So we've got basically everybody piling in on one side and we then start to see basically the opposite. Everybody piles out equally um, the same time. Now even though in the last few years we've started to see the Dow Jones and the S&P recover, the Nasdaq is still a long way from these previous highs. The other thing I want to explain to you about markets as well, and if I just quickly go back to this graph, and I'll just show you this peak here, right up here at the top. Okay, so what I want to explain to you here is the NASDAQ, and we could use any share or market to show this. You've basically seen the big run up, and then we see the market going down. Now a lot of people think, well why is the market going down? It must be people selling. It must be people you know, now starting to sell out. Actually it's not. What you need for a market to keep going up is buyers. If you can imagine, and I hate to say it, but it is true, if you look at this, it looks like a pyramid. It's almost like a pyramid scam. And how that works is you always need more buyers to keep it going on. What happens here, if you run out of buyers, even before there are any sellers, if there's no more buyers, there's nobody else to push the market up. Then what happens is the market makers basically have to start bringing the prices back down again to see if they can attract buyers. So something you just want to keep a note of in all markets, markets basically don't start going down because they run out of, um, you get sellers, it's because they run out of buyers. Same again on the way down as well, when you get exhaustion, when basically um, you, start, you can start seeing markets going up even before buyers come in, it just runs out of sellers. Let me show you on the next slide as well. Disbelief. This is where nobody believes that the wheat market is ever going to come good again, or the gold market, or the stock market, or any market you want to think of. It could be the uh, classic car market. As people become more and more sure, we then get belief, i.e. people believe, yes, shares are a great thing. You know, everyone's talking about China. It's a great place to be. Total belief. This is where Everyone at dinner parties is talking about, oh, you want to get into the wheat market, you want to get into the stock market, China, the best thing ever. Um, and what you've got here, you know, you've got mass media, you've got new books coming out every day, every channel you switch on, they're all talking about the stock market. You're in the back of your London cab and your taxi driver says, yeah, I've got a tip for you today. So you've got almost like the, everybody's involved. You know, I'm sorry, that's not the way market works. When everybody's in, it's normally the time that we want to start thinking about getting out. On the way back down again, we then get disbelief. People actually here don't believe that the market's over. They can't believe the good times are over. And so on and so on until we get belief at the other end, which basically now everyone believes that the stock market's finished. It's a zero-sum game. What does that mean? It means somebody wins, somebody loses. There's always a buyer, there's always a seller. If you go out and do an up trade today, uh, there's somebody on the other side of that trade. Okay, it's a simple market. Anyone that wants to argue that no, that isn't the case. Well, sorry, that's the way it works. 
There was a great study done by Professor Lawrence Harris, and you can download this from uh, this site here. And basically what they did, they went into um, the markets of winners and losers, and basically why people trade. It was done on the futures markets in the States, but the futures markets is very, very similar to the spread trading market in the UK. Um, what was interesting, a lot of the traders basically um, didn't really trade to make money. They did it for entertainment, you know, which is crazy. There are various sources of information and with the internet, there's Bloomberg, there's CNBC on television, there's God knows how many newspapers and magazines. You've got to be very, very careful. There's a lot of news. Do you remember what we said earlier that you've got um, buyers and sellers? There's always going to be different views. There's always going to be the bears and the bulls. That's what makes the market. If, we were, if the market was all on one side, then there'd be nobody else to take your other side. Um, so you've got to understand there's going to be a lot of news, there's going to be a lot of conflicting information. That's what makes the market, that noise basically keeps us going. So be careful, maybe you've got into a position and then somebody's told you something differently or you've picked up the Sunday paper and you may have bet something to go down and the Sunday paper's gone and tipped it. Don't just change your view because you've read something in the Sunday newspaper. Okay.